call up yonder. How many of you want to be in that roll call up yonder? Amen. Amen. When it comes time to sing around the throne, somebody say, Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. I'm Jesus. ready to go. Amen. Listen to this. He said, I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians kept in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. Therefore, say to the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from their bondage, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with a great judgment. I will take you as my people, and I will be your God. Then you shall know that I am your Lord, your God, who brings you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you to a land which I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I will give it to you as a heritage. I am the Lord. I want you to hear that God's making promises. Amen. And he's Amen. making promises. Do you think that God is good on his word? Do you yes. believe the promises Amen. of God today? Somebody Amen. say, I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe what God says. I believe the promises that he's made towards me and towards all of us today. I believe that he wants us to be his children. I believe that he wants us not to be his servants, but he wants us to be his friends. I believe he doesn't want me to do things. He wants me to be someone. Amen. Amen. How'd that go? What was that song? Um, if you want to be somebody, if you want to go somewhere. You better wake up and pay attention. And there's a scripture that says, wake up, the sleepers. Wake up, you sleepers. And let Christ shine in you. Amen? Amen. Wake up. If you want to be somebody, if you want to go somewhere, you better wake up and God has made many promises. And he is good at his word. Is he not a good father? Amen. Amen.
circumspectly not as fools but as wise redeeming the time because the days, the, are the days are evil now you understand as you read in the Old Testament that the, the Israelites went through some tough stuff as a matter of fact they are, their taskmasters were you know, they were just evil um, but you know what they were just doing their job hold on let, me, let that sink in for a moment can you really fault those taskmasters Really think about it. How we want to judge the taskmasters who would whip the slaves and you know force them into all this labor and doing what they were doing, but they were just doing their job. And uh, I'm just kind of giving you a different perspective on this because you remember what happened with Moses when he saw a, a slave being brutalized. He rushed in to rescue that slave, didn't he? And how did he do it? He killed that taskmaster for just doing his job. Now, obviously, he thought he was coming in. And he was doing what he thought he needed to do. He was going to go rescue this uh, this slave was, uh, before uh, something bad happened. And if you know the story, uh, he was about to be buried alive. And, I mean, wow. So can you fault Moses for doing what he thought was right? I'm saying these things because some things just don't sometimes make sense. But there are some things that do make sense. There are some things that we can know. You know, the scripture tells us that God's, you know, God's, God, you know, the God is, 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 is his thoughts are not our thoughts. But wait, if you read that, that verse, uh, those, those verses in the right context, he's not talking to us who believe. 
He's talking to the non-believers. So when we're a non-believer, when we're not a person of faith who follows Christ, who's a disciple of Christ, at that point, then his thoughts are not our thoughts. But did you know that when you are born again, that one of the things that you uh, have access to is to the mind of Christ. And so you can know what, what God has in mind. You can know what he has in store. Now, he's not going to tell you everything up front. All I can tell you right now is if he told me everything up front, what I know right now, I, yeah, I don't like it to make it to where I'm at now. Somebody say amen. Amen. Because um, somebody say enough is enough. <laughs> I, there's only so much that you can deal with, right? Amen. <laughs> if God told you everything he expected of you right now. No. Now, here's the problem. <laughs> Even with what he's revealed to you, some of us here this morning would be honest. If we would be honest, we'd say, yeah, well, he's, he's asking quite a bit already. And maybe we're even afraid of what he's going to ask for us to do. But did you know that whatever he asks for you to do, he's going to equip you? The Bible tells us that he does not call the ones who are equipped. He equips the ones who are called. Amen. And so we, we, we read today, we read in, 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 uh, in Exodus chapter 6, and we see that God promises to save Israel from slavery. God promises to free them. God promises to redeem them. He promises to make them, get this, his people, and bring them into a new land. Now, um, when you think about the new land, of course, we always think about we're going to go from you know, this side of the tracks to the other side of the tracks. Of course, in their case, it was one side of the Jordan to the other side of the Jordan, promised land and all that stuff. But there's something more for that. There's something else that we, that we need to understand. Uh, he wants to give you a new land. He wants to lead you. And you get this. It, it's, a, it's a place. It's a strange place. It's a whole new body. We, we say the Lord's Prayer. Say, would you, could you just say it with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. The thing we need to understand is that you don't necessarily have to move geographically to get new land. Turn to your neighbors and know what. what Wait, how many, how many of you were a different person after after you came to Christ and born again? Amen. But you're still in the same mind. Yes. yes. Kind of. Different mind. Different mind. Amen. But then, wait, there's certain things that happens with this body that wait, we know we don't we don't do certain things. It's not and it's not really just a telltale sign. There's just certain things that we just don't do. So when, you know, I, I can sit here and talk about this, that, and the other thing. Uh, you know, alcohol and, and, and all this kind of stuff. And, but the Bible talks talk specifically about those things. It says, do not drink words in dissipation. You know, don't be drunk. <laughs> um, as a matter of fact, it seems that apparently back in those days, if you would read the book of Acts, people thought that the, the disciples were drunk when they were baptized in the Holy Ghost, didn't they? These people, these guys, they're not drunk as you suppose. But in fact, they're anointed with the Holy Spirit. Um, so that's a whole different spirit, you know? But God promises to deliver us from slavery. He, he, he promises to give us purpose. Uh, and also, he promises to create in us, create with us, a family. We say that a, a moment ago we read, as it was in the beginning, is now. Now, the whole thing is, is that that's what God wants to have. He wants to have what he planned from the beginning. And I'd like to say it would be nice if whatever God wants, God gets. Amen. But isn't it sad he doesn't? He doesn't always get what he wants. And I think it's sad. Because I, I think he deserves to get whatever he pleases. I think he deserves... <laughs> To be able to redeem for himself. Did you know that's what we were saved for? We're talking about salvation too. Salvation, prayer for salvation. He wants us to redeem us to himself. You know, the Bible says in, in, uh, uh, in, in Romans, it talks about be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we go back and we go back and we pray to our, you know, our Father. and we, Jesus is teaching us to pray. And he teaches the disciples to pray. And that's what we're doing here today. Uh, one of the things that I am finding out, again, so many years later, Sister Linda, is A, either people didn't learn how to pray to begin with, or B, um, 
and they're new. Or maybe we just need a refresher. If we went around right now and took prayer requests, most of us we use um, um wait, is that your answer? How about you? Would, would you be able to give an answer? I mean, really, can, can you give an answer? Um, you know, if we took prayer requests. See, here's what I'm telling you right now. See, God made these promises to Israel, and so many years later, we read the rest of the Old Testament, and we see that God was faithful in keeping his promise. He led them through some hard times. Somebody say, praise the Lord. I know praise what God's that's like. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't have any idea what it was like then. It had to be terrible, but that some of us, we go through some desert excursions. Yes. But God is extending those same promises to us today. Right now, right here. He is offering us, through His Son Jesus, He's offering those same promises. He wants us, listen, He wants to save us. Say, He wants to save us. He wants, he to, wants save us. to save us. To save us from what? Well, to save us from sin. Amen. Uh, he wants to free us. One thing about redemption is He wants to free us from the past. In other words, when, when you're redeemed, you don't have to have, you don't have to be ashamed any longer. And you can say, I once was lost, but now I'm found. And no, that's the person I was, but I'm a new, I'm a new person. I'm a new creature. I'm, I'm not the same man that I was. I'm not the same woman that I was. Amen. I'm a different person. And, and brother, you head from the head. Why? Because, well, you know, honestly, I think differently. I see things differently. I, I want things differently. I know the Bible says if you pray believing, he'll give you the desires, the desires of your heart. But here's what I say. He gives you those desires. Amen. And the only desires he, listen, he's not, we just pray that prayer. And lead us, listen, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. He's not going to, are you getting this? He's not going to give you something in your heart that's going to tempt you to do evil. If, if you believe what the, what the prayer says, if you believe what God's promised. So he wants us to be saved. He wants us to be free from the past. And he wants to fill our lives with purpose. And some of us, we've lost our sense of purpose. Some of us, we just don't really quite understand. There's so many little things. That, did you know that God's even in the details? I mean, we talk about that. You know, uh, God's even in, uh, it's a, he's even in the ministry of cleaning the toilets. He is. Yeah. Yes. And, and there are some of us that have been anointed to. <laughs> but even in that, but you do everything wholeheartedly to please God. How about answering phones? How about, there's a whole list of things, and, and this is something we need to get a refresher on prayer. We need to get a refresher on what it means to have different areas of ministry and services. Say that. So I say amen. 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 So here's what's going to happen today we're going to pray. Because God's offering promises to us. And he's offering promises to anyone who will take him at his word. Amen. Do you believe God with me today? Yes. Amen. Right. So as we pray here this morning, and that's what we're going to do. I'm, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm taking advantage of the fact that I don't feel like running and jumping. <laughs> Although if the Lord anointed me, I could do it. Amen. As we pray, let's, let's think about the promises and what they mean to us as well. And what they mean to your family. And what they mean if, if you have if you work here, what they mean in your business, um, what they mean in your neighborhood, what they mean in your home, and, and what, what they mean in, in grandma's house, what they mean in you know Uncle Joe and Aunt Sue. I mean all these people, what they mean what what do these promises really mean to you? And can I tell you that some of you, maybe you don't realize this, God has promised you as a gift. Amen. Robin, if Barry was sitting right there, I'd see if he'd say, is Robin your gift from God? You may have to have a different discussion, but... <laughs> right, Sister Mickey? Yeah. How about your mama? Is she a gift from God? Yes. How about you? Were you a gift from God, especially to your mama? How, how, how about it, right? We're, both of you. Brothers and sisters, amen, and, and then you got the in-laws. Well, wait a minute, your family, right? You guys need to realize what it means to be that gift and what, and, and actually be able to, I'll say, perhaps verbalize it. 
What would it look like for people that are the closest to you to also be saved, to be free, to be filled with purpose, filled with the presence of God, filled with God's Holy Spirit, filled with God's Holy His Holy Plan, His divine destiny, and 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 and, and then brought into His family. What would that look like? What would the church look like if that was going on? Here's what we do. I 